Hi, I'm Joel, YouTube's 3D printing nerd, here with Matter Hackers to help you get started in 3D printing. In this video, I'm going to assume that you've loaded your filament, you've leveled your bed, and you know you're going to get a good first layer, because the next step is printing your model. If you're ready to print your model, let me take you through Matter Control to show you some of the settings you need to pay attention to when 3D printing. It's easy to get to these settings in Matter Control. Click on Settings and Controls, and then under General, you're going to see Basic. Click on Basic to expose Standard and Advanced. Let's look at Advanced. Under Layers and Surface, you can change settings for things like the number of perimeters and the number of top and bottom layers in your model. In Infill, you can change your infill density and type. Under Speed, you can change the speed at which things print. Different features print at different speeds, and this is where you change that. A skirt and a raft are sometimes valuable when printing, and this is where you add those. Under Support Material, you can configure the different support material options. Output options are simple. Center on bed, yes or no. Multiple extruders can be configured here with offsets and timers. If you changed from Advanced to Standard, you're left with fewer options, but still more than what Basic offers. And you can see under Layers and Surface, Infill, Skirt and Raft, and Support Material, you get to choose the settings that work best for you. For now, let's stick with basic. First, let's start with layer height, which gives you three different presets, fine, standard, and coarse. Standard is a great place to start. Coarse gives you a faster printing time, but lowers the quality of the model on the exterior. Fine gives you a really high quality part, but it does increase the print time. Next is fill density, and that's going to dictate how much of the inside of your model is actually made of plastic. These are not injection molded pieces, so the insides can be hollow or completely full of plastic. The percentage you give here defines the amount of the inside of your model that is plastic. So as an example, if you have 30% for your infill, you're going to have 30% of the inside of the model filled with plastic. Don't worry, it doesn't just all deposit it on the bottom or off to the side. It's able to create different types of patterns so that the infill percentage of plastic is applied evenly throughout the model. For normal everyday printing, you're going to stick with 10 to 20% and 30% if you really want to give it a fair amount of plastic. And there's a good chance you probably won't go above 50%. Now you may be asking why you would check the box for generate supports and the answer is fairly simple. A 3D printer cannot print in mid-air. You'll just end up with a spaghetti mess and get frustrated. Generate supports when you have layers of the model that don't have previous layers directly under them. As an example, if I hold my arm out from my body and I was being printed, my arm would need supports because there's nothing under it for the 3D printer to print. Finally, we come to the checkbox for create raft. And you may be asking, why would I create a raft? Well, a raft in 3D printing is a layer or two or three of plastic laid down before the first layer of the model. And you may need this if the model doesn't have a lot of surface area touching the build plate. The raft helps with overall adhesion of the model. If you try printing your model, and it tends to lift up from the bed, or it's not sticking very well, you can create a raft to help ensure good bed adhesion. With all of our settings set right, we should be able to print. And here we go. The printer is currently laying down a very nice first layer. We can see plastic squished down onto the blue painter's tape. We can see the lines very crisp and solid. When a first layer is going down as well as this, you have high confidence in the rest of the model printing just as well. Watching your 3D printer in action is a little hypnotic, isn't it? Well, I hope that was some good, useful information about slicer settings and matter control. I hope your 3D print is going right now, and I hope that first layer is going down really well, and I, I hope you have a successful journey in 3D printing. Until next time, I'll see you later.